Why sit here until we die? See, the only thing that will move you out of your comfort zone, out of complacency, into the the things that only God can do for you, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. He said, the only thing that will get you there is hunger. The only thing that lifted them out of their self-pity was hunger. The only thing that lifted them out of their excuses, we might as well, nobody else is doing anything. We're all dying, so we'll die here together. The only thing that pushed them was hunger. The only thing that caused them to begin to move toward their destiny and a brighter day was hunger. And hunger will drive you and push you. And and fasting is hungering for God. The Bible said that there were four of them. And I think probably one of them was sitting there and he had tacos on his mind. One was sitting there and he had fried chicken on his mind. And one was sitting there and he had Krispy Kreme donuts on his mind. But one stood up and said, I can't sit here. I can't have another year like I had. We're dying. We're dying. Why sit here until we die? He says, you know, if we enter the city... Uh, he'll keep us alive and we'll live, but if they kill us, we'll die. Now listen to this thinking. Listen to this. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, this guy was a college graduate, I'm sure, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. That's brilliant, isn't it? (laughs) But why sit here until we die? That hunger began to drive them. He began to hunger and he said, there's got to be more. And it was the hunger that began to move him toward the direction of the plan and the purpose and the miracle that God had for him. And I believe with all of my heart that there are things that God will do for people when they hunger for him. When they fast and they pray, fasting is hungering for God. And when you begin to hunger for God, suddenly you move up out of the challenges and the comfort zone and you move up out of self-pity and up out of depression and hopelessness and the hunger begin to move and they begin to take steps, four of them, toward the enemy's camp. Things even got more desperate inside the walls of that city, so much so that the Bible gives one more astonishing description. They became so hungry that the Bible said they began to boil and eat their own babies, their own flesh and blood and make bargains and say, we eat your child today, we eat my child tomorrow. See, we don't understand hunger We don't understand hunger. I'm talking about people who were so desperate that with hunger. And what I want you to understand about that is, is that when people do not feel the spiritual hunger for God with spiritual things in homes, in families, in marriages, when they only feed on donkey's heads and dove's dung and carnality and think that's enough to hold your marriage and bless your family. When you only feed on carnal things and you don't feed spiritual hunger for God with a hunger for God, then guess what? You start turning on one another. You start devouring one another. You start attacking one another. And the enemy comes and divides families and divides homes. And it's really a sign of a growl for somebody who needs to begin to consume spiritual appetite and get a hunger for God that changes our attitude, that opens our eyes to, to, to the bigger things, not just devouring one another. I'm praying that somebody will hear me preaching. That will say, I cannot have another year like I had. I cannot sit in this addiction for another 12 months. I refuse to live like this again. Something's got to give. I'm desperate and I've got a hunger for God that only God can fix and God can fulfill and God can do in my family and in my home. 
The Bible said in Lamentations 4 and verse 9, to be slain with the sword is better to, than to be slain with hunger. One translation said it's better to go down fighting than to sit there and die. For good or bad, hunger drives you. Esau came home from a hunting trip in the Bible. And the Bible said he was so hungry that he was almost home. But his brother Jacob came out and he said, listen, I'll offer you a bowl of beans. Spiritual hunger. But I'll offer you a bowl of beans if you'll give me the birthright. And in a moment of weakness, because he did not feed the hunger for God, he tried to put carnal things in for the hunger of God. And that's why fasting is so important. That's why it's not for people all around you, but it's not for you. This is for you, sir. This is for you, dad. This is for you, business person. This is for you, college student. This is for you. God says there are things that hunger will take you to that you will never reach until you hunger for me because I have it all. I am the one who lifts one up and pulls another down. I And you know what he promised in Matthew 5? They that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And the Bible said that Esau lost his birthright because he fed that real hunger with donkey's head, so to speak, and dove's dung instead of a hunger for God. I close with this. What got the prodigal son out of the pig pen? What made him come back home to the father? What was it? It wasn't the smell of the stench. It wasn't the disappointment of the friends who abandoned him after he had spent all of his money. It wasn't the filth that he was living in None of those things got him on the path back to the father's house. It was one thing that brought him back to the father. In Luke 15 and verse 17, he asked a question. How many of my father's servants have bread enough to spare? Listen, and I perish with hunger. The thing that drove the prodigal son up and out of the pig pen and the filth back to the beauty and the love and the grace of the father's house, he said it himself, I am hungry. It's hunger that will cause prodigal sons and daughters when somebody is fasting for them, hunger will wake them up in the pig pen. Hunger will wake them up in their addictions. Hunger will wake up the backslider. And if they won't fast for themselves...
fast, when we begin to pray for our families, for our sons, for our daughters, when we do that, God says, I will use hunger as the force that drives and pushes them on to the path back to the Father's house. When nothing else works, pleading and trouble with the law and all kinds of things and all kinds of ramifications of that life. When nothing else works, Jesus put it like this in Mark chapter 9. This kind cometh not out but by fasting and prayer. There are some of our family members, our friends, our associates, people that you work with, people that you do life with, and they're lost and they're on their way to hell. And the only thing that's going to get them out of the muck and the mire and on the path back to the Father's house is hunger. And fasting is hungering for God. And when a church with thousands and thousands of people here and by internet and at all of our campuses comes together and my stomach's growling at 1 a.m., but your stomach is growling at 2 a.m., and somebody else has a growl going on, and it's like a total irritant to the devil and demons. And they say, the scripture said, this kind of spirit will only loose and release its grip on people when people are fasting and praying. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.